Everyone likes to see themselves represented in media, be it books, TVs, movies, or as you probably guessed it, video games. But unlike passive media, games offer you a chance to actively participate in a story and take on different lifestyles, whether it's through a playable visual novel, a simulator, or an MMORPG. This is what I love about gaming, the chance to lose yourself in new experiences and narratives that go beyond what we typically go through day to day. For example, I can play as a character who has hair. What a world we live in. But in all seriousness, representation and having a safe space to explore who you are or who you want to be is so vital. And there's not enough opportunities to do that for people unless they look like me. There are new strides being made to change this, which is great, but it's something we all need to keep pushing forward. For instance, G4's 2020 Game of the Year with Supergiant Games is Hades. This dungeon-crawling roguelike is packed with thrilling action, stunning art design, and a pantheon of queer characters. So today, we're going to explore a variety of LGBTQ plus representation in games from the last decade, ranging from indies to AAA titles. I haven't had those life experiences, so I'm completely not the one to be leading this conversation. So that's why I'm bringing on Emma May Lee. She's a streamer, and she's gonna talk about a series of video games that were influential as she discovered her sexuality. Emma, welcome. Hi Adam, thank you so much for having me. I'm Emma May Lee, a streamer and student at USC going into my senior year. Um, I'm also a GGP, Gay Gaming Professionals recipient. GGP is an organization founded and led by my mentor and really great friend Gordon Bellamy. Their mission is to uplift those in the LGBTQ community that love playing um, and developing games or going to content creation like me. I also recently came out as bisexual um, in light of Pride Month and I'm really excited to share about some of the games that really impacted my experience in coming out. Emma, uh, what is the first game you'd be interested in talking about? I played a ton of MMOs growing up. Wizard 101, World of Warcraft, um, Fantage, a bunch of Asian MMOs as well. Um, and these were very integral in kind of figuring out my own identity as well because uh, it was very common for the guy characters to have girlfriends. And um, I normally played as, as a girl avatar and um, I remember seeing like all these characters saying like looking for girlfriends <laughs> and I was like I want a girlfriend so then when I started saying that I was looking for a girlfriend suddenly people were like wait what like why are you looking for a girlfriend like you're a, you're a girl like that's weird like you mean you're looking for a friend and like no I want a girlfriend so that was not accepted really so what I did was I made I would make guy characters to pick up girls <laughs> and I, I had a whole like I had like multiple girlfriends you know pick up the ladies and it was super fun for me and I thought I thought it was just like I didn't think it meant much but looking back on it now it was like wow this is me sort of trying to explore my own sexual identity what's fascinating here I really had not considered it until now is that okay so when when I was young and I had games. I mean, it was pretty much the game is the game is the game. Like, there was just only so much you could do to create a sense of character of self or anything like that inside of it. Whereas, I'm getting the sense that with stuff like MMOs, where you have an avatar and you can, you know, it's almost like there's new places to start to have conversations either with people or with yourself as you're kind of moving through the idea of, of trying to figure out who you are. Do you think games have created a new avenue for a lot of young LGBTQ people to just kind of ha start to have that conversation with themselves? And that's what's super awesome about MMOs, I think, is you can literally invent somebody that you, the person that you want to be um, on these games. And that was super, I guess, eye-opening for me. You also have highlighted some games that speak more directly to the LGBTQ experience, you know, almost, I, I guess, as a simulation. The Coming Out Simulator by Nikki Case is a sort of conversation simulation, uh, partially based on the developer's own experience of coming out. Is the game kind of just a straight story, or is it, I guess, enough of a simulator where you can experience the process of coming out yourself? Maybe you want to use it as a safe space to, you know, try out what's going to be a very difficult conversation for many people or for say someone like me to understand just what underpins I guess the, the very anxious time of needing or wanting to come out to your parents or someone else. 
basically the way that the game is played is you can choose different dialogues that basically lead the conversation with Nikki, um, the main character, and their mother. And I believe that the same outcome is you get the same outcome at the end, but you're able to lead the conversation. This game really highlighted the struggle, the internal turmoil um, of, of what coming out is like. If, if you don't mind my asking, Emma, just, just, just to get some context, I mean, the way you've spoken about your parents, it sounds like they're pretty cool. I mean, was there anything, was it just the anxiety of having to come out or, or, or were there... I guess, belief systems you were aware of with your parents that would make the process all that much more difficult. For context, my parents are the absolute greatest. I love my parents. Mom and dad, if you're watching, hello. Um, but I, they're super supportive of me, but I honestly was afraid that they wouldn't be able to understand bisexuality because of previous conversations we've had, what it means to be bisexual, and them kind of thinking it's just a phase or people are confused. However, I think that after I came out to them, they were able to... I was able to explain a bit more about, you know, what bisexuality, you know, means and like how I knew I was bisexual. Uh, I think with time, like they're going to be able to really understand it through me as, you know, their loving daughter. And um, I, I hope that I can kind of enlighten them to the possibilities that there are. Even for someone like you in a loving household with awesome parents, that process of coming out is still very, very difficult. And um, thank you very much for your time on that. Uh, let's move on to your next title. All right, so next I'm going to be talking about um, Gone Home, um, which was, I recently played through, it was such an amazing game, just very emotional, and I, I really went into the game not knowing what it was about, but ultimately it's this game that centers on this character, Caitlyn, who's piecing together why she came home to an empty house, and at the same time, alongside, we're listening to the narrative through journals of her sister, Sam, who um, is discovering her own sexual identity, and we find out that at the end, chooses to run away with her love interest, who is also a girl, um, Lonnie, and this was something that, I guess, I, I didn't really know what to expect going into the game, and and um, hearing the journals from from Sam was just super relatable, honestly. And like Sam's own experience coming to terms with her sexual identity and the conflict between Sam and her mother and her parents um, as you know as they tried to understand her. But I think it was the game was set in 1995, so this is a time when this is not super you know prevalent and understood. I gave Gone Home Game of the Year the year it came out. Uh, oh, really? I, I, yeah, I think it's one of the most phenomenal games ever made. Uh, actually, I, I believe a mutual friend, Rob Manuel, uh, encouraged me to keep playing it uh, because at first I was just scared because <laughs> you think maybe it's a horror game. It's a horror game, And yeah. then slowly these amazing just moments start to, un, un, you know, re reveal themselves. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, there was definitely some, like, you know, suspenseful moments and I thought it was actually really integral to the gameplay itself because... Yep. Honestly, like the experience of, of being LGBTQ, you know, there's, it's Ab scary at times, yeah. you know, no, like, no. you know, you never really know like what people are going to say, people, what people are going to think, uh, what's going to happen. Like you're like, I, I honestly like coming out to my parents it was so, so scary for me. Like I did not know how they were going to react. Uh, I, I think we're about to switch gears in one of the most dramatic ways possible. <laughs> um, your next game, I'm just I'm gonna let you say it because I don't think anyone's expecting it. <laughs> yeah, so Borderlands, <laughs> the series <laughs> Borderlands. What happily surprised me about Borderlands was the normalization of LGBTQ and being LGBTQ, and from the background NPCs to some of the main characters, their LGBTQ identity just being a normal um, part of the storyline. And that's super important and just normalizing the notion of yes. being LGBTQ. Yes, absolutely. Speaking of identities and normalization, uh, I know that there was a notable release from last year, which was Tell Me Why, and this was the first AAA game from a major studio that featured a transgender lead character. I think it really does set a standard in the uh, video game industry on how LGBTQ narratives should be portrayed and um, how the themes should be conveyed as well because I think Don't Nod was very careful and authentic to the experience and they made sure to do you know, their research and it really effectively highlighted the reality on, on being transgender. And I think for a lot of people that just don't understand what's happening in the conversation around trans people that pronouns are very, very important. This isn't some sort of whimsical thing that you make fun of. It's, it's, it's very central to someone's sense of identity. 
Yeah, so in uh, Borderlands 3, Gearbox introduced this character, Flack, who identifies with they, them pronouns, they're non-binary, and basically I thought it was super cool and was very controversial as well. Um, basically, Gearbox said that they would ban anyone that referred to Flack with he, him pronouns, as it would be considered hate speech. It puts forward the standard of correctly um, gendering people and using the correct pronouns, which is very important, especially going forward after years, I think, of, of it not really being super common to introduce one another with pronouns. Sort of on the topic of the, you know, having a trans person play a trans person in a video game, how important do you believe that uh, the inclusion of LGBTQ plus members on the development team of a game? Maybe not even a game that's necessarily about queer experiences. I think it's super important, as is like, you know, cultural, I guess, representation and um, like when it comes to race and, and um, gender and whatnot, I think having LGBTQ plus representation um, behind the scenes is, is awesome and I think that having this representation can really open up a lot of um, doors and have I guess the kind of representation that we we want to see and and have um, going forward for games now obviously it'll it, it, you you have people on the team who can also ensure that you're not misrepresenting a group of people being able to have um, LGBTQ members on the developmental side of things and being able to accurately represent and um, portray these experiences of these characters um, and also the plots, I think, is really important as well. So I think you have one more game that you're going to share with us that is also a very, 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 very good game as well. Yes, one of my favorites of um, 2020 um, and Game of the Year, uh, Hades uh, by Supergiant Games, which is a game that featured multiple LGBTQ characters such as Achilles, Chaos, Dusa, Patroclus, Thanatos, and Zagreus. Sorry if I butchered any of those names. So you're not a classics major, I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm cognitive science. <laughs> They highlighted the classic queer love story of Achilles and Patroclus, who are gay lovers. And it was really awesome to see how Supergiant Games didn't shy away from highlighting this this really, you know, romantic plotline and making clear their, their relationship. Well, Emma, I just thank you again for taking the time to talk. I mean, I actually really, really learned a lot about the role that games can play in helping someone understand and become comfortable with their, their identity. Uh, one last thing before we let you go. Um, what does the future of queer representation in gaming look like to you? Yeah, so I think that like because of games coming out like Tell Me Why and Hades, there being there's this really high bar being set to show how LGBTQ characters can be implemented into games in um, a casual way like Borderlands or a more integral way and part of the story like Tell Me Why. I honestly wish that these games were available when I was a kid and when I was understanding my own identity. Not that, like, no shame on Wizard 101 or World of Warcraft and me playing a, a guy and picking up girls in those games, but um, it's definitely a different experience being able to have these games available that, I guess, normalize the idea and the notion of being LGBTQ, and this can be very helpful for um, younger generations coming of age as well. And bring down that barrier of resistance. Um, Emma, thank you again for coming on the show. I really, really enjoyed this conversation. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. If you haven't checked out the games that Emma talked about, definitely put them on your list. Then go to the comments below or go to the G4 Discord and let us know your thoughts. But as someone who's seen almost four decades of gaming pass before his eyes, I do believe the future is bright. And it's going to include developers, studios, and games that will continue to offer up even more stories, perspectives, and wonderful experiences.